Welcome back to The Morning Show here on the Arise News Channel. Joining us now to review some of the headlines of today's newspapers from around the world is Arise News Analyst Emmanuel Ifeni. Good morning, Emmanuel. Good morning, Ruben. Good morning, Good morning Tundu. Good morning, Leila. Now, let's start with these day newspapers. Lead story concerns mount over rising foreign funding for Boko Haram. Obasanjo, military chiefs warn of prolonged prolonged war against insurgency. Buhari directs service chiefs to promptly settle fallen soldiers' entitlement. Now, we've always known that uh, there's some foreign uh, involvement, especially since um, when um, Boko Haram leaders pledged their allegiance to ISIS and, of course, and, uh, the Islamic State of West Africa. And this West funding, African province. Oh, yes, of West African province. So the funding from, uh, especially with the degrading of ISIS in Syria and Iraq, um, that they were looking for another safe haven where they can continue their terrorist acts. And West Africa happens to be where they find that kind of environment with the Boko Haram um, occupying and um, carrying out activities in the northeast of Nigeria and areas in Niger and even Cameroon. Now, with this kind of, uh, it's not a revelation, if you ask me. It's not a revelation. We've always, we've always known that. But what the government has been doing ever since, because we still hear of um, our soldiers not having uh, the kind of weaponry that we need at this time, change in tactics or change in uh, uh, architecture over time. And um, of course, recently, they're also talking about super camps and the deployment of helicopter gunships. But the, the angle that perhaps I'm worried about is that we should brace up for a prolonged war. I, I thought Avon degraded Boko Haram significantly. Perhaps it was premature to declare ISIS technically defeated, as this administration done some years ago. And it's not splashing in our face that, indeed, that is not the case. Rather, Boko Haram seems to be gaining strength, not necessarily in terms of territory, but in terms of their weaponry, weaponry and attacks, even on military formation? Well, I think we, earlier on we raised a number of questions. If it is confirmed that indeed, you know, there is a, a flow of funding from international sources, is it not possible to stop that flow? Two, if it is uh, also the case that this, uh, they have more sophisticated weapons, those weapons do not drop from the sky. They are brought into the country. Is it possible to source, to stop the movement of those uh, weapons into their hands. And three, if there are foreign countries that are involved, can Nigeria engage those countries diplomatically? Because if we say terrorism is a global threat, then the response to it also will be one of international cooperation. Yes. So the concern that has been expressed in that story, there are concerns, as you have said, that are, you know, um, as that old, are known. As old as the world itself. That, that, they are, that are well known, you know. And, as a result of that, it's just uh, a challenge for government to make sure that, you know, uh, additional steps are taken uh, to ensure that there is a sustainable and effective response to the Boko Haram threat. Yes. The angle of uh, the geopolitics of uh, oil drilling in the Chad Basin, which the story also mentioned, that perhaps there are foreign interests that are uh, against Nigeria's um, exploration of oil in that uh, basin, perhaps, because on the other side, because one of the drive in seeking to explore oil in that Chad basin is that in the other parts, other parts of uh, Lake Chad, in the other can in the, uh, other countries bordering Lake Chad, there's drilling going on. So there must be oil in our own end. That's one of the motivation over time of. Uh, looking for oil in the northeast. Yes, but it's part of the Lake Chad Basin that is within Nigerian territory. 
Does Nigeria not have sovereign rights over its own territory? Okay, and if there is a threat uh, coming to our, you know, a, a threat against our economic interest, wherever it is coming from, we have a duty, we have an obligation to protect our territory. Yes, because the. And our resources. Yes, because the story went into the area of how. Yeah, but oil you know, flows. of course, that, you know, the, uh, I mean, I don't want to use the word uh, conspiracy theory because people have the right to their own opinion. Yes. But I do not think that, uh, you know, the countries that are implicated in that story will accept any such responsibility. Well, let them come and drill on the Nigerian side and pay the royalty. Perhaps that's a solution. Let's move on. Vanguard newspaper, federal government courts, travels, estacles for ministers, other officials, MDAs to submit, get approval for travel plans, directive to ensure efficiency, curb, curb leakages in government resources, size of delegation now limited, more officials to travel economy. Ruben, you are no longer in government, so it doesn't affect you. Don't worry, I will be back in government <laughs> tomorrow. <laughs> well, Daily Sun, same story, Buhari moves to cut cost of governance, slashes Estaco's size of delegation for ministers. Um, of course, um, the Daily Trust has similar story. Buhari cancels Estaco as ministries budgeted $2.4 billion for foreign trips, restricts travels to eight in a year. I think where to start is to reduce the budgetary allocation for travels. Absolutely, yeah. That is where you said, because if you say you have to take permission, you have, it has to be okayed, um, it has to be cleared. Of course, once you have 2.4 billion, the style and attitude in government is that this money must be spent one way or the other. To the yeah. 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 So, so I think the, where to start is that since the budget is still under consideration at the National Assembly, this uh, estacles amount budgeted for traveling should be slashed yes. in the first instance. Well, the Perhaps move to other subheads. The budget is an so. estimate. Yes. And in any case, you know, it's I said in principle, what has been uh, the statement that has been issued by the office of the secretary to the government of the federation is perfectly in order. But nobody can actually travel without approval. Even proud to travel, right, at certain levels of uh, government, it will go to the president's desk. The president himself will look at the list. He will be the one to approve a code. If you go and assign any uh, a code to yourself, whether what is in the budget is... Uh, uh, 20 billion or whatever, if he doesn't approve, you are not going anywhere. And if he cuts the list, he cuts it because he's the uh, head of state and uh, the head of government. So, I mean, but it's good that this has been said to put people on notice that it, that privilege to travel is not something that you can abuse any longer. So this is what you were saying earlier, that this is not anything new necessarily. It's just good to... No, there are certain aspects that, that are, are new, new yes. But like the, reducing the number of times you can travel. For the approval. Slashing uh, extra codes. Yeah, but it must be approved. What about the delegation? Yes, That's yes, it's also approved. Relative to what is available to so government. So you don't agree that we should have been issue, reduce the amount available for traveling? Where is for... So that we can walk towards that amount. The budget is amount. still up there for, for public debate. You know, I think it can be reduced. reduced. Yes. So let's <laughs> move on. To um, the Guardian newspaper, Nigeria's the Guardian newspaper, Nigeria's debt stock rises to 25.7 trillion. While the Punch reports the same story, this with 25.7 trillion debt, expert oppose IMF's call for tax tax hike. Says Nigerians over tax. Yes, the country right now spends. An average of two trillion to service debt, both foreign and local. Yet IMS prescription, usually anti people, tax them, tax them, and tax them. No, that's <laughs> <laughs> that's not what the IMF has said. We're one of the lowest the, tax the IMF, countries in the world. The yeah, IMF is, is saying we need to manage our tax better. Yeah. We need to widen the tax base, mm -hmm. and you know the statement that was uh, issued. You, or the statement that was made by one of the IMF officials is that, look, if you manage your tax better and you widen your tax base, then you can expand your revenue uh, 
base. Yes, you won't and have to borrow more. You, you that, won't have to point. borrow more. So that, that, that's the uh, basic uh, so, uh, But Nigerians so, are already being overtaxed. No, no, but we're not, though. That, that's, that's just the not thing. the fact. The, the thing is mm. that people tend to get upset at the way the government manages things. I think it's the sort of communication that needs to be worked on. We are not overtaxed, actually. Really? Our tax to GDP well, ratio is one tax? of the lowest in the world. We're 6%. Ghana is like 15%. The developed world, the West, that we all admire so Talk much, the 30%. States? Crazy. So, and then 19 million of us pay taxes. Out of 60 million economically active So Nigerians. why don't get more people to pay tax yes. than imposing more no, tax? Exactly. That's what tax That's reform the issue. is all about. They shouldn't impose more tax on Nigerians on already few of us who are paying. This is the problem. So they need to expand it. There's a whole... How can only 19 sure, million sure of us... you are paying tax? Mm -hmm. Sure. Do you pay tax? Before we ask for your tax paper. Of course, <laughs> the last five years. That's 19 million of us are shouldering the burden. And that 19 yeah. million, they continue to add more burden. And we really cannot bear it. The whole idea is to expand. That's the why the FIRS yes. is going through several processes like the and by the way, our VAT, so many accounts. Our VAT, in spite of you know, the support that it has received, is considered one of the lowest in Africa. It is. Africa. It is. Yeah. We're, we're not overtaxed, really. OK. They'll be coming in different forms. That's what is the yes, problem. Yes, yeah. and, it's, and it's just too much at it's the same time. Managed. Yes. Well, let's move on to the foreign newspapers. Um, the Times, Brexit deal on a ninth edge as DUP blocks Johnson. Now, The Guardian reports the same story this way. Johnson last minute scramble for DUP backing. Why? Mm -hmm. While the I newspaper uh, puts it this way, deadlock on Brexit deal ahead of summit. Well, if any, maybe we'll take a short break and then when we return, we can take a look at what is happening as uh, Prime Minister Johnson uh, goes to uh, Brussels today. We'll be right back. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the Morning Show here on the Arise News Channel. Stay with us, reviewing some of the headlines in today's newspapers from around the world. It's Arise News analyst Emmanuel Ofeni. Yes, Ruben, we're looking at um, the state of Brexit talks and uh, the deal. Whether it's close, according to the Guardian newspaper, the Guardian of UK, yes, Johnson, uh, last minute scramble for DUP backing. This is the last this, uh, push to avoid extension, because time is not on his side. Yes, the, fit, the message from Brussels is that, yes, you seem to have a good deal to be considered. Macron seems to be on board. Angela Merkel seems to be on board. But the DUP has suddenly pulled uh, one and saying that, look, perhaps they are not in agreement with all aspects of the Irish uh, border uh, issue. Especially what is at stake now, uh, one of the issues at stake is that Northern Ireland, are they going to remain in the VAT of EU or the UK? That's a sticking point. And uh, if you know how the DUP were able to extract um, something from uh, Theresa May, one billion pounds. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, before they were, well, they agreed to I think, I think go into an alliance yes. with her. I, think I don't know whether that will suffice this they time need a, around. They need a large check. <laughs> That's a large I think uh, <laughs> what is going on in the UK now, between the UK and Brussels, looks very familiar. It's like we're back to where we were with uh, Theresa May. Yeah. Because now that, uh, you know, Prime Minister Boris Johnson has been negotiating, and uh, you have Stephen Buckley on one side, you have Michel Barnier, you have the leaders also uh, negotiating. And we're told that, as at yesterday, we were close to having a draft. Now, that draft will still have to go to Parliament for ratification. And because of that, we've been told that Westminster is likely to sit on Saturday. Yeah. Uh, if, Westminster, will be taken today. if Westminster does not sit on Saturday, even if a, a, a draft proposal comes out of the uh, meeting in uh, Brussels, Right then, it means that we are back to the Ben Act. Pres uh, Prime Minister Boris Johnson, by you know, 19th, will be required to now go back to Brussels to, to ask for an extension, extension till 31st January 2020. Now, the Irish backstop uh, issue, which was the problem with uh, the rejection of Theresa May's proposal, is still the same issue now. 
Now, the uh, Northern Ireland, Boris Johnson is proposing that, you know, cannot be in the customs union, but that it could be subject to certain regulatory standards, you know, uh, with the EU. But the Dem a Democratic uh, Unionist Union. Party, the DUP, is a party that is giving, you know, uh, Boris Johnson's party, the Conservative Party, some kind of uh, survival in uh, the, the parliament because the conservatives don't have an outright majority. So what they say in this matter is, is very important. Yeah, they have and that's why Boris Johnson this. has been negotiating with Arlen Foster, the leader of the DUP. He's also been uh, talking to the Tory Brexiteers, but the question remains, will he get the support, you know, to okay. be able to see it through? And don't forget also that the Republic of Ireland is also concerned about what happens, you know, whether um, uh, the... Uh, UK will finally end up with WTO once it goes out of, out, of the, uh, out of the EU, right? And the Republic of Ireland is insisting that whatever happens, they do not want a situation that will jeopardize the Good Friday Agreement, <clears throat> you know, the uh, 1998 uh, peace deal. So there are still a lot of issues to be resolved, the ideological issue, the issues of uh, sovereignty, environment rights, workers' rights, the fate of... Uh, you know, uh, EU workers uh, living in the United Kingdom. So that's why I say it's like we're back where we were, you know, a yeah. few months ago. And it, Britain remains, you know, uh, the EU and uh, the UK, they still remain divided on the question of how to go forward. And I don't see Eileen Foster giving an inch. This is a woman who has said in the past, not regarding this mm. issue, but she has said in the past, I don't draw red lines, I draw my lines in blood. She's a hardliner. Yeah, in fact, the so DUP has, already issued a statement yeah, she has questioning rejected, the proposal. Yeah, yes. she's rejected this deal. I don't see her changing her mind. She's not that kind of a flexible character. And she has said they should go and come back with a sensible agreement, which means that she thinks this deal is nonsense. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's you know, throwing a spanner in the works for you, Boris Johnson. You know also the, uh, the politics of Ireland between the uh, Irish uh, nationalists and the Irish unionists. And she's on this. She's a unionist, she's a unionist mm -hmm. you know. And there are issues about sovereignty and about whether or not, you know, Northern Ireland uh, will be uh, will remain in the union as it were with uh, the UK or a portion of, you know, the sovereignty of the UK, you know, of the union will be affected, you know, if you go that, into what issue. looks like a customs mm -hmm. union. That's yeah. the next yeah. issue as well. So it's something that. Uh, will continue to keep a watch, but it's just around the corner. <laughs> but you, uh, this is the thing. So I mentioned the £1 billion pound Whether agreement that, that will the come into play. and Theresa May were able to agree. I'm not sure if that can no, happen no, with this no, situation. No, this no, is not as simple as... negotiation, yes. even with Boris Johnson. But with, because, because, I... because the ideological concerns. With Theresa May, it was a simple... Conservatives have lost the majority, join us. But yeah. well, with this, they're really entrenched ideological concerns. Yeah. So even a billion pounds might not swing it. Yeah. Maybe more. Okay. <laughs> Maybe everybody <laughs> has their price. <laughs> we shall see. Well, if we go to the United States, the USA today, Trump, Syria, not our problem. Republicans join House a rebuke of withdrawal, that's withdrawal from uh, Syria. Trump defended his uh, handling of the matter as strategically brilliant. More like delusional. Oh, <laughs> More like delusional. No, I think I think President <laughs> Trump is uh, is a bit uh, is under very heavy pressure, okay. and he shows in the way he's been reacting. Well, he seems to be in his own world. The way he well, I mean, he, he keeps <laughs> insisting that this is about putting America first, but you can see that uh, even his. Uh, allies, the Republicans, both in the Senate and in the uh, House, uh, they don't support him. And he has resorted to a situation whereby he's abusing everybody, from calling Nancy Pelosi uh, a third-grade uh, politician to telling uh, Lindsey Graham, uh, the senator from South Carolina, Republican, to worry more about what is going on in, uh, in uh, uh, South Carolina, to, you know, abusing uh, uh, Recep Erdogan. Telling him, telling him not to be a tough guy and not Don't to be a fool. fool. Otherwise, he would uh, destroy, uh, you Turkey know, Turkish economy. economy. But what is interesting is, you know, the consensus, the emerging consensus among both Democrats and Republicans that, you know, uh, President Trump's decision to withdraw 
U.S. troops, uh, more or less gave the green light to Turkey. Yeah. Turkey. Because, you know, now he's complaining, he has sent uh, Vice President Mike Pence and uh, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo, you know, they will be in uh, Ankara today. Right, uh, right. So the problem that was created could, could have been foreseen because Turkey has consistently said that the PKK, the Kurdish Workers' Party, uh, is allied to the social democratic forces and that these are terrorists and that they cannot allow a situation where the Kurds will come and grab, you know, either territory inside Turkey or they will be launching an invasion uh, by the northern border with Syria. And what, what he's tried to do, they've already captured some villages and they are, you know, making incursion into northern Syria. To create a buffer zone. Yes. A safe corridor. A safe, a safe, a safe uh, corridor where he intends to put refugees, two million Syrian refugees, who are not necessarily Kurds, you know. But the alliance with uh, the uh, Assad government uh, by the SDF, you know, is advancing. Um, Russia is also involved. Uh, President Putin has invited uh, Recep Erdogan to a meeting uh, to see how you know, that the crisis can be stopped and escalation can be uh, prevented. But definitely President Trump uh, must take the blow. He says it's not our war. We did not cause it. These people have been fighting themselves for a thousand years. If they want to continue to fight, let them continue to yeah, fight. but he says... have done enough. He promised to bring American forces home. In a That's an election pro way. And he's doing that. And that is it. No, but there's a manner in which you... To exactly. him, it is as simple as that. Obama, Obama's it. foreign policy, when, when history reviews it, has never really recovered from mm -hmm. the abrupt departure from, from Iraq. Iraq. Yeah. And he's making the same mistake. And an even worse mistake, because what he's going to do... Any move that you make that has ISIS wives rejoicing, you yeah. must know is a mistake. What he's going to do is bring about the resurgence of ISIS. And Lindsey Graham, who at some point was his most staunchest supporter, has said that if even one American is killed as a result, then that blood is on Trump's hands. And mm -hmm. that's as stark as you can put it. Absolutely. Well, so Trump, I don't know how Trump strategically has said brilliant as much also to he is. Erdogan. You know, accusing him that he's likely to be regarded the devil. <laughs> as the devil. Oh, as the devil. <laughs> Hundreds have been killed already. So <laughs> Erdogan doesn't care. So there is no, an imagined humanitarian crisis, Absolutely. you know, and the fear of the resurgence of uh, ISIS in that zone, which will be a threat. Uh, but Russia has quickly taken advantage. Yeah, but Putin you know, is looking like the world statesman. He's the only one who's winning in this. Yes. Oh, yeah, yes. it's fantastic at the moment. Mm -hmm. I think it's a foreign policy for, for, uh, for Trump. Huge. Huge mistake. And I don't know how, as far as I'm concerned, he saw this coming. There's no two ways well, about he it. Care. He doesn't care. But well, it is. Thank you very I much, know. Emmanuel Fenning. Thank you. We'll see you again tomorrow.